Hey everyone, so in this video, I am going to have Apple buy me my car. Now, you might say, what the hell are you talking about? Well, stay tuned, check out this next video, and I guarantee you, you'll be hooked on this strategy. All right, if you haven't done it, please smash the like button and subscribe to this channel. Let's go. So the thinking is that I don't want to use uh, a big chunk of cash be sucked up into a uh, asset that's depreciating, which is a car. Even though I want to drive a new car, um, it's not really worth it to basically buy all cash. So what I want to do is actually instead of using that cash to purchase this vehicle, I'm going to put it into a very good company, invest in a very good company for the time that I am in the lease or I'm financing this vehicle. So hopefully it will return back much more than the interest I pay on this and give me a nice uh, cushion so I can actually decide what to do at the end of the lease or the end of the financing terms. So if I'm leasing, hopefully you know, my, let's say a three year lease, I can purchase this vehicle with the return that I'm getting uh, with the money that I've invested into the market. Uh, if I'm financing, and I'm getting a good interest rate. Let's say I get a 3.99% interest rate. As long as that investment returns back more than 3.99%, then I think it's well worth it. Um, now, there's a caveat to all this, and that is if there's a market crash, um, and then that will be a problem. So if there's a market crash, and that money goes to flames, and the company goes down, the stock price, I will not be able to touch this money because I will have to wait that out. Um, but then, you know, this strategy is really for someone who's actually working. So if you have not enough money to even support this monthly payment, uh, then I would say don't use this strategy. You know, with the, the good thing about this is that with the lease, if after three years, your your there's a market crash or whatever the reason you can't take the money out of the market, then you can return the call back to the dealer, okay? Just like that, no no obligations. As long as you return back in good shape, you're fine. Uh, if you're financing it, it's a little different story. Financing, you will have to continue doing it. But in my thinking is that I'm gonna buy this car anyway if I'm gonna finance it. So it's just that using this strategy where I'm investing the money instead of using it to purchase it outright, um, I can actually maybe have the market buy the car for me, if that makes sense. This is the car I'm looking at, which is the 2023 Santa Fe. It has a starting MSRP of 28750 uh, Right now they have a promotion on financing an SE trim level at 0.99%, which is really good. Um, actually, I think they have some 0% financing, which I have to find out, but Right now, it's at 0.99% on the website for this 2023 model. Or I can lease this at 269 a month for the SG model, uh, which is lower down payment um, than if I financed it. Uh, but if I want a little higher trim, I do have to pay close to another $100 more a month, which is 349 So the plan is basically to invest this base SRP, MSRP, uh, uh, money into the Apple stock and hopefully within three years which is what a, the lease would be up uh, I can actually either purchase the car or get another one uh, if I decide to finance it um, I will probably finance this for 60 months and if Apple stock does really well during those five years I will probably pay it off so it really depends on which way I'm going. And these are some of the options I'm looking at. So what do you guys think? Should I lease it or finance it? And if this is a good idea, basically investing the bulk of the money uh, into a really good company. So investing in a company like Apple is, I believe, probably one of the best moves that anyone can make because Apple is the bellwether of the tech industry, believe it or not. So I don't know how 
much you know about Apple, but I'm sure almost everybody knows, especially now that they came out with the Vision Pro, another new product that's going to take advantage of a lot of uh, AI and virtual reality type of technologies. You will see a lot more, um, a lot more people probably want to get into Apple, so which in turn will um, increase their stock price. So I'm going to use this company to basically finance my car. So instead of buying my car all cash, I will be using this company to invest in. And hopefully in three to five years, this stock will rise so much that it will pay my car or at least help pay some of it off. Hopefully Apple stock will rise enough to pay off most of the vehicle purchase uh, that I'm looking into. And I believe it will, because if you look at Apple, let's say we go here to Yahoo Finance, you see Apple, their cash flow is crazy, okay? Their revenue's been going up, their earnings been going up. If you look at this part here, all right? And I don't see anything stopping them because, like I said again, it is the bellwether of the tech world. Apple has created a ecosystem where everybody that goes into the ecosystem will use their products and also any new products that come out. So like I mentioned previously, Vision Pro, I'm sure a lot of Apple heads will be looking into purchasing it. Even though right now it's almost $3,500, I guarantee you someone's going to buy this. And if I go to bar charts, uh, another website, uh, type in Apple's performance, their stock performance. All right, so if you look at their, let's say their five-year performance, it was up 276% in the last five years. If I can even get half of that in the next five years, I'll be way happy because, let's like say, I'm financing the car or leasing it. So the finance rate, could be 0.99% or 0%, depending on which model I get. Uh, and then leasing it, you know, basically you're paying for the depreciation only. So what's left over at the end of the lease, you just have to make enough basically from your investment to pay off that car and purchase it if you want. Or if not, you can always uh, switch over to another car. So their 10 year performance is 1,155%. Now I'm not even going to look at this like it's going to raise that much in annual returns because past performance, as everyone knows, does not indicate future performance. So, but I believe Apple will hit some targets in the next 10 years of at least increasing uh, three to 400 percent minimum, bare minimum, because if you look at the average tech index for the last 10 years, is around 300%. And I'm thinking it's going to beat this index at bare minimum. So let's say we type in QQQ. And let's see what it gives us. All right, so QQQ for the last 10 years is 277%. Uh, for the next 10 years, I would think at least that Apple will beat 277%, given that they have this whole ecosystem. And if the economy goes right of course there's no guarantee there could be some kind of crash some unforeseen crash and if that happens then you know you have to work around it but like i said previously if you're looking to purchase this car anyway and you have a, a job or actual uh, finances that you can find that, that you can support this vehicle then you know you're going to do it anyway and if there's a market crash like my previous videos um, uh, would say is basically buy more, okay? Because you will not touch Apple stock at all if it crashes, obviously. Don't sell it. Just buy more so you can accumulate more shares at cheaper prices. All right, so if you like this video, please do smash that like button, subscribe, and comment below. And hopefully I'll keep you updated on what I will do with the strategy and if it works out. Until next time, take care. Have a great day and happy investing.